Uh, it's 27 years since uh, the exodus of Kashmiri Pandits from the Kashmir Valley. Uh, fortunately for us, uh, we have, in my team, we have two of our colleagues uh, whose parents uh, moved out of the valley uh, after uh, the 92 incident. Uh, we're going to talk to both of them. Uh, one is uh, Shweta Ganju, uh, whose parents move, or whose family rather moved to Dehradun, and the other is Sagrika Kisu, whose uh, family moved to uh, Jammu. Uh, let me begin uh, with you, Shweta. Uh, could you give us a little brief? I mean, what did your family do, uh, and uh, when did you guys move out, and how was the moving? So the exodus happened around 90, in 1990s, and uh, while that was happening, my family shifted to Dehradun. It was a, it wasn't a sudden change. Uh, it happened in stages. Like we shifted to temporarily, uh, we shifted to Jammu, and thereafter we migrated to Dehradun. Uh, the entire family it was difficult. Uh, my father is an MES, so uh, the change had to be made at that level as well. But fortunately, the government was uh, very cooperative. MES basically stands for Military Engineering Services, which is the engineering department which works for uh, all the three forces. So, uh, but the government was really helpful and they helped uh, people at, uh, at every single stage. So, yeah, that way. So, uh, uh, you were born where, in Delhi or in Dehradun? I was born in Jammu, 91. 92 we shifted. You were shifted? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Sagrika, when did your uh, family move out? We moved around 1990s and 1990s itself. My grandfather, he was an English lecturer, professor in Kashmir, and my father, he was working with State Board Education Board. So we, we shifted to Jammu and we stayed there in a one rented room. So it was quite difficult for us to move to Jammu and then stay there. And my grandfather, at the time, when the time he should retire, he started working with a school. He started working as a vice principal in a school at the time. We were quite our houses they were you know our houses were occupied by the Muslims and everything happened that way okay, okay. Uh, before I come to you both as an individual uh, what are the kind of stories that you have heard about uh, how was your family impacted uh, was there any direct threat to your family what was the reason that your you know your grandfather or your father gave for your family moving out of the valley uh, there wasn't a uh, direct threat as such, but yes, the entire uh, community as such was uh, facing a huge crisis over there. So our house was, as I've heard from my parents and grandparents over the years, our house was at, uh, at this place called Habba Kadal, which was sort of uh, the center of the city. And uh, while the entire, you know, the terrorism was sort of flourishing in the Bali, uh, blackouts used to happen and there were people crying, there were people dragging people out. And you weren't allowed to, you know, uh, sort of uh, wear all those traditional things that basically define you as a Kashmiri Pandit uh, from the others. <laughs> Having said that, it is important to note that all the neighbors that have been, that my parents and my grandparents had stayed with over the years, they definitely helped at every stage. So, uh, yes, while there were, back, uh, there were um, blackouts, people used to, actually the uh, kids were, you know, put under, put inside the beds. So hidden that under the hidden under the bed, so that even if uh, people come in, the terrorists come in, or any sort of threat is there, at least the children are kept safe. So things also like that. The news of uh, news of people being killed in the broad daylight. World hall. There was a man named Taplu who was killed in the broad daylight outside his residence. So that was being heard, and the voice used to you know uh, echo from the loudspeakers in the mosque. Yeah, that hame chahiye azadi, hame chahiye Pakistan, sort of that. And there were uh, poster po pasted on the walls in which it was written. As gav, uh, as gashe, uh, uh, kashir, but uh, but new seed, but a uh, but a rose, something like this, which meant that we want Kashmir with uh, Kashmiri panditanis, not with Kashmiri pandits. So that was kind of a threat. People started imagining if that happens, what will happen. So they started so moving. Did your family, pers uh, I mean, individually, were they threatened? Was there any direct? Not a not an individual threat. Though the neighbors, they were quite uh, good. But at the point of time, the neighbors, when asked, when we asked neighbors. My my grandfather, they tell, they started telling us that we cannot protect you now because there was a huge crisis in the valley. They said we cannot protect protect you now. It's better for you to leave. So when these kind of uh, uh, this kind of subsequent events happened, so we had to leave. You know, both of you have been born out. You also born, born in, Jam in Jammu. Both of you have been born in Jammu. So both of you have been born out of valley. Do you personally feel like going back? Um. I love my place, I love the place that I belong to, but no, 
I mean, yeah, for the purpose of visiting that place, off and on, that is one part of the story. But I think I'm at a great place right now. So I have uh, great respect for the valley and for the place I am in. No, I wouldn't like to shift back. Okay. And what about you? I mean, I won't like to shift back. I won't, but uh, though I um, uh, stay in Delhi, so the kind of, uh, you know, being a Kashmiri at heart and all the society we live in, the every day there is a call that we should go back to Kashmir and then, but if you, if we see the present scenario in Kashmir, there is like a constant curfew, 50 days unrest, you know, there is nothing happening. So what will we do when we go back to Kashmir? So that is a real question. Even if we go back to Kashmir, what will we do? What will do? The, my, my, uh, my cousin, she is in Kashmir. So what they do, they are in like, there is curfew. They don't go out. They stay at their homes. They are, you know, it's like a psychological depression there. So what will we do when we go back? That is the real question. One of the key questions is 27 years down the lane as uh, a generation of uh, Kashmiris born out of Kashmir. Do you hold any ill will against the people who inflicted this amount of pain to your family? I do feel sad. I do feel that whatever happened was wrong. I strongly condemn it. But Things have changed over the years. Some For the valley, the things have definitely not gone well. But the, for the people who've shifted outside, things have definitely panned out in a good way. So yeah, while I feel bad, I have uh, that sadness, that profound sadness that I cannot visit the place where my family belongs to. I'm also happy at the place where I am. But do you have any ill will against the people who inflicted the pain on your family? No do ill will. Do you have anything against Does Does ever this Kashmiri Pandit versus Kashmiri Muslim thing come on you, in your head? No, not to me. Okay. What about you? As she said, the profound sadness that is there. But you know what happened, the exodus that happened, that was kind of a political movement, if you see. Because uh, it was like uh, the thought that we are oppressed was since uh, like since 1947, after 1947. So they took arms, was not because they hated Kashmiri Pandits, they took arms because Kashmiri Pandits belonged to India and they sh wanted to show resistance. So that was the real reason behind that, which was later on used in a in their political gimmick. But that was the reason, so there is no ill will towards them. One last question. How do you look at the Kashmiri quote-unquote Azadi movement? Well, I strongly believe that Kashmir was, is and will always be an integral part of the country. We are Indians first and that is all I care about. Azadi, no Azadi, well, that's all political. So not getting into the politics of it, I totally am, I'm an Indian first, that is what I would say. What about you, Sadi? Even I don't think that Azadi, whatever they worship, Azadi should not be there. We don't want Azad Kashmir. Uh, Kashmir is an integral part of India and it will always remain. Thank you so much, both of you. That's uh, both of my colleagues, uh, Sagrika and Shweta, talking about their family struggle and what their point of view is on the issue of Kashmir. Thank you for watching.